It's time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews, and weekly giveaways. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back, Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We have our co-host with us here in the studio, Bryant Falconer. <laughs> yeah. How hey, you doing, I'm, Dave, Bryant? I'm here, man. I'm doing good, doing good. Well, let's start off right off the bat, and let's talk about what we're smoking. I'm going to go first today. Uh, it's Roma Thursday, so I'm smoking a Roma Craft Intemperance, just solid smoke. I uh, enjoy these pretty regular. Uh, if anybody knows, I uh, always smoke a lot of Roma Craft, so... Anyway, if you like a nice medium smoke that's always going to burn, really nice, good draw, good flavor, check out the Roma Craft and Temperance. All right, Brian, what do you got? Man, today I am smoking the McAuliffe Leyenda, number two. You know what? I smoked one of those yesterday. Yeah. Dude. Man, this pepper hits and this uh, slight nuttiness, bruh. This is a great smoke. You've never man. had that before. No. Yeah. But I am a fan <laughs> more than a fan right now yeah i smoked one yesterday and i've had one before but it had been a while and i had uh-huh. kind of forgot how good those are uh, yeah. and the draw is Bruh. perfect oh, i'm telling you you sit back here and this is like one of those that you it's a perfect draw the first third is just like amazing right now so i'm just sitting back enjoying myself i really don't want to talk right now so i gotta smoke hey go ahead so uh about what we're drinking tonight uh went to the liquor store and i looked everywhere and i couldn't find the colonel e.h taylor bonded which i really love so i went with the old faithful i went with the buffalo trace which is good stuff and so after i bought it i was talking to the young lady that checked me out and i was like do y'all ever have uh, the Colonel E.H. Taylor? And she was like, oh, yeah, we just got a case in. And I was like, oh, man. So anyway, she said, come back. I'll get my bottle next time. So tonight we're drinking uh, Buffalo Trace. Can't go wrong with that. No, I sir. love Buffalo no, Trace. So. No, sir. Anyway, uh, tonight on the show, we've got Jason from Barrel Burners. If you don't know who Barrel Burners are, you must not be on social media because <laughs> they are everywhere. And they're on YouTube. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're on Twitter. Every time you look up, you see that patch. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They got a great patch. Yeah. Uh, they got a great organization. Yes, sir. Uh, so anyway, that'll be coming up part two of the show. And then uh, here in a little bit, we're going to reach out a good friend of the show, uh, the author of the Cigar Smokers Ten Commandments. Oh. Right? I thought doves were going to fly <laughs> out behind you. But anyway, uh, let's talk about our sponsors right now. We'll take this opportunity. Uh, we've got Hireman Solomon, and uh, we've been having them for, well, this is eight weeks, so two months now. Wow. Yes, sir. Time flies when you're smoking good cigars. Yeah, man, especially. And so, uh, you know, I love the uh, Traveling Man. That's been my favorite uh, of all their cigars. Master Mason. Although, I, and I don't even remember which one it was, but which one is the... Uh, the, the Biter? No, the, the one that you smoked yesterday. Oh, that was the Lancero. Yeah, which one uh, was that, though? It's the Purple, purple Band. Yeah, yeah. The purple Band Lancero. Oh, come on, come on. So come anyway, on. I smoked that one. It was really good. But I still prefer the traveling Me man. Me too. That's and just my go-to if, on those. If you are a fan of a, a strong, good bite in a cigar, hire a Solomon Grand Architect. Yeah. Oh. That is a very good yes, smoke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, and I do like that, too. It's just not one that I'm going to smoke, smoke every that, time. That, you know you what can. I mean? You got to be in the mood. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and then let's talk about our other sponsor, which is McAuliffe. McAuliffe. Dude. Well, you're smoking one right yes, now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I mean, dude. Well, you know, we talked about them last week, and I told you, you didn't even know all the cigars they carry, no, and, and that's one you'd never seen. Bruh, this one here. <laughs> yeah, it's hitting the mark, isn't oh, it? Oh, man, come on, man. I'm just sitting back here thinking about why did I waste my time worrying about it. Right? <laughs> just keep looking, just keep looking. And no, this is not the f- the five star. I'm still looking. But, bruh, this is a four and a half. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? <laughs> So that I smoked one of those yesterday, and I was just really impressed. And I had forgot how good those were. Mm. 
So we're very thankful to have them on board. We just can't say enough about how much we love their cigars. And yes, you know what? I've smoked most of their line, okay. but they still have a lot of the uh, cigar line that I haven't smoked yet. So I'm looking forward to yeah. getting each one of those and talking about it. After this one, I'm right there with you. We're going to go through this line together, brother. Right. All right. Well, let's get on with the rest of the show. Let's get to, uh, we're going to call up Jacob and uh, get him on the line. So if you guys stand by one second, let me dial him up. Hello, this is Jacob. Jacob, this is Rob Jones from Cigar Talk. How are you doing, brother? Hey, Rob. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Uh, myself and Bryant's here in the studio. We're actually doing the show right now, and you're already on the air. Uh, we dialed you up, and uh, I told Brian a little bit about you, but we, uh, we're happy to have the author of the Cigar Smokers Ten Commandments <laughs> on the show, man. <laughs> Thank you does, very much. That it does go that time. <laughs> I got to ask you, man, are you smoking anything right now? Yes, sir. I'm actually smoking a uh, Oliva Siri V Melanio. Melanio. Um, there you go. Yes, uh, Figurado. Uh, oh, good smoke. Profile, so. Yeah, good yeah. smoke. Yeah, it was actually a gift from uh, my mom, so I thought this was the uh, perfect occasion for it. Well, that's awesome, man. You got a good mom. Yes. Now, the question is, are you drinking anything? Yes, sir. I'm uh, drinking Dragon's Milk Stout. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Thanks out when i when it comes to smoking i uh typically stick with stouts um sometimes i'll go to a, a darker lager kind of like a dos Equis or so you contacted me uh through the website and sent me an email and uh you were known as the cigar guy throughout the greek community when you were in college yes sir uh you know it's we have a lot of events in the greek community and i always found myself smoking cigars there and it just kind of got through the ranks and other people, you know, would see me smoking cigars, and they'd see my book. Um, I have a cigar dossier that I carry with me. Nice. 24-7. Yes. Nice. So, you know, that's one of the things that I tell a lot of cigar shops is they should actually have, like, a college night. Mm -hmm. I think that would be mm -hmm. huge because, you know— Especially if you're not going out partying, which a lot of college kids, I know they do go out and party, <laughs> right? But a lot of college kids don't want to go out and party and get wild, and a cigar shop is the perfect place for them to go hang out and socialize. You know what I mean? Actually, tomorrow, a buddy of mine, um, we are actually going to the local cigar bar here called the Outlaw Cigar Company. And, you know, we're, that's how we're going to spend the night. Yeah, I actually heard of the Outlaw. Uh, they uh, had an event, I think, in the last few weeks that was pretty big. Yeah, uh, I recently just moved up here, so I wasn't able to uh, um, attend it. But okay, I cool. know uh, I got some, unfortunately missed out. You went to college in St. Louis, is that right? Uh, it's it's in Rolla, Missouri. It's right in between. Uh, it's kind of, you know where Mizzou is at? Yep. It's about an hour and a half south of there. Okay. Uh, it's a big engineering school uh, called Missouri University of Science and Technology, also called Missouri S&T. Okay. Um, so it's it's a very small school for um so it's very dedicated for the area yeah it's, but it's very dedicated about 90 to 95 percent of the students are engineering majors nice so they, they round up all the nerds and put them in one school <laughs> yes yeah that's just, exactly that's exactly what we are hey hey we're with you brother because yeah. you know what most cigar smokers are nerds we're just nerds <laughs> about cigars so hey man so how did you come up with the uh uh, Ten Commandments for Cigar Smokers. Uh, so uh, within my fraternity, especially in the Greek community, whenever um, we would have you know, sit-down events or just, hey, you want to have a smoke tonight? It's a special event. Um, we'd, I'd basically sit down with a group of guys and, you know, I'd watch them just kind of, you know, you know, bite the cap off or, you know, cut it with a knife. You know, it was never. Yeah, they were they were coming in doing the Clint Eastwood. There were no style. rules. Yeah, they were just doing what what they were doing and they what they thought was right. Well, and, they, you know, they I, see they seen some old movies and thought they were cool, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I kind of laid it out for them. And then I was like, you know, there's a there's probably some Ten Commandments around. Uh, so some of the entries that I have on there, I've gathered from cigar journals, cigar aficionado, the uh, like the publishing Nice. Um, or even um, just, you know, my own personal beliefs. Yeah. You know, kind of, and then uh, also talking to other cigar aficionados within cigar stores. And, you know, whenever I'm at cigar bars and lounges, you know, I kind of talk around because it's a great networking opportunity. And, hey, what are your likes and dislikes when, when you see a new 
a newcomer especially. Right, right. So let me ask you this, Jacob. Uh, how did you actually get into smoking cigars? So uh, growing up, you know, my friends and I, when we were, you know, young teenagers, right around we were driving and all, uh, we actually started with those Swisher Sweets. Oh, and no. It just kind of started getting that flavor sense, and then um, we would always smoke at my buddy's house, and my buddy's dad, he's actually the president of the Missouri Lutheran Synod, so he's really high up there within, you know, as a pastor, and that man, you know, six foot six, big dude, wonderful mustache, uh, one of the best mustaches I've seen in my entire life. Nice. That guy was smoking two, three cigars a day, and, you know, that that's a man's man, <laughs> and, you know, growing up, always wanted to... You know, I looked up to the guy and yeah, same absolutely, with a lot man. of my friends. Yeah. And then uh, when I got to school, you know, um, found a couple of the older guys within, you know, the fraternity that really were into cigars. And they'd pull me out of my room and say, hey, come meet these older guys that are in the fraternity. You know, we're, you know, very welcoming. And um, so I'd sit down with them during uh, what we called study hours where we were supposed to be studying. And we're smoking cigars and drinking some uh, Buffalo Trace or uh, Eagle Rare and sitting on the front porch. Well, that's actually what we're drinking tonight is some <laughs> Buffalo Trace. Oh, yeah, that's some good stuff. But uh, following that, you know, it got to my uh, sophomore year, and I was sitting there, and I was like, you know, if my dad always told me growing up, if you're going to do something, do it right. And the best way to do it, I was trying all these different cigars. You know, why not keep a book, a dossier of all the different cigars I smoke. So yeah, every time I, like I try it, a new cigar, I keep the bands and write my notes about it, you know, how much it was, what if I'd recommend it, and even, you know, the reason behind it. You know, if, if I was just, you know, bored one day and I really felt like a smoke, you know, I just whipped one out. Or, you know, like, for instance, tonight, you know, I'm on uh, talking to Rob Jones himself on his podcast. Well, I'm just another smoker just like you, brother. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, one of the things that we talked about in the email uh, previously in this week was, you know, how the younger generation can get involved with the uh, cigar community, what they can do. And, you know, you, you said that some people had said that you should start writing a cigar blog or maybe doing a podcast. And I, I think that's mm -hmm. a great idea because there's a younger generation that's starting to come into the cigar lounges and into the cigar scene. And so, I mean, being a younger guy, when you go into the cigar lounges, I'm sure you've noticed that a lot of the guys in the shop are a lot older than you. So, I mean, are you bringing young younger guys into the shop with you to hang out? Yeah, um, at least guys around my age. Um, you know, there's a couple guys that are uh, older than me that still go to the cigar shops with us, but, you know, they're a little bit more naive, let's say, when it comes to cigar smoking. Sure. So they'll have me walk around with them and just kind of get a feel for, you know, what they like. And, uh, you know, one of the things that a lot of these younger guys are saying is, oh, you know, I tried a cigar once. I didn't get a buzz off of it. And, you know, I, I always tell them, you know, it's it's not about the buzz. You know, it's, it's about the event. It's about you sitting down and enjoying it. And Hey, now, that's, you know, that's wise words from a youngster there. Yes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because it is all about the event. It's it's not. It's, you know, I I never thought it was about the buzz. If I was going to get a buzz, I'd drink a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> but yeah. uh, and you know, even even drinking with cigars is not about drinking until you get a buzz. It's just about enjoying the two together. But the biggest part is is the event and enjoying the cigar with who you're with, the camaraderie of the cigar community. So uh, are you teaching these younger guys about the cigar community and coming in and hanging out? And I mean, that that's the part of the community that we love. So I, I'm just curious at your age, and I believe you told me that you're 23. Is that right, Jacob? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're 23. And so, I mean, what what would you say that cigar shops could do to make it a more inviting atmosphere for the younger generation? Don't really have anything that they really need to improve on. It's more of younger guys just going there for the first time and actually experiencing it. You know, when we say, hey, we're going to go to a cigar bar, you know, do you want to join us? And they're like, oh, you know, that's not really my thing. You know, well, I mean, you can still come and hang out with us and uh, one of the local cigar bars from St. Louis that I would always go to, they have bocce ball courts 
so there's a couple you know courts for bocce ball oh that's cool man that was a lot of fun um you know that was a huge hit for a lot of these guys you know even though they're not smoking they're still hanging out with us yeah playing that's, bocce ball that's, while we're smoking that's really cool man that's real cool i've never played bocce ball have you no never yeah, played it oh yeah it's a lot of fun uh I, I've, I've actually i will take that back i did play on a video game <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that it translates, but no, I got the general count. idea no, how it no, works. No, okay. Yeah, hey, that, that's that's the good part. That's cool, man. I would love to do that. You know, sometime when you're hanging out at a cigar place. Not that mm-hmm. we're going to be doing that in Texas. It's too <laughs> it's too hot. I'm sure y'all are doing that outside, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, St. Louis they, has they got better have weather. Those, uh, yeah, they have those retractable walls, so they can actually lower and okay. uh, you know raise the walls. You oh, know, like, a, like a tarp, like an ice house. Like a yeah 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 so nice. the, uh, during the winter they close those down and then they have heaters in there and then when it's summertime they just have it open 24 7 nice. unless it's a really windy day then they'll close it i got you cool. um so let me ask you this are you originally from st louis yes uh born and raised uh then went to school in Rolla, missouri and then uh just accepted a full-time job up here in kansas city so did a big move from st louis and from what Rolla part, also and what part of st louis are you from St. Charles. St. Charles. Okay. Used to have a yep. friend that lived up there. I used to live in Afton, and uh, Bryant here lived okay. in East St. Louis. Born and raised. Okay. So don't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're both from St. Louis. Yeah. That means something. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we thought we would go over uh, the a brief part of your Ten Commandments here. Let me. I pulled them up so. I'm not gonna. I'm trying not to butch, butcher them too much, but I got my glasses on. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with number one: is thou shalt not bring cigars purchased online or other stores into another cigar shop. And we are yep. huge on that. And the last of it is: don't smoke inside the walk-in humidor. So those mm-hmm. are those are two really good things. And we've said that before. If you're gonna go to a shop. You buy your cigars at that shop. Yeah, you got to respect exactly. that. Exactly. You're not going to show up at a bar with, you know, a case of beer. Right, right. It's the same concept with cigars. Well, Bryant said you don't show up to a uh, restaurant with a rotisserie, rotisserie chicken, chicken in your yeah. purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's the same concept. And I've seen guys that come in, they're like, oh, I can't smoke my cigars in here. And he's like, yeah, no kidding. So, uh, anyway, let's get on to number two, which is thou shall store cigars properly by a humidor or a temporary box. Respect the work that goes into the hand rolled products. Yeah. I think that's great, man, because that shows that you really do uh, understand the hard work that goes into making mm-hmm. a cigar. Uh, we did a show not long ago with uh, Smoking Brad out of Lubbock who went down to Honduras and gave us, you know, basically the step-by-step of how cigars are made. And he said over 200 hands touches that cigar before it gets to your shop. Yeah. So I like that. Uh, let's go to mm-hmm. number three, which is thou shalt not be rude about smoking a cigar. I think that's a good policy. Sometimes I have not abided by that policy because... And I'll tell you this, I was down in Houston. I told this story not long ago, but I was in a bar that was a smoking bar and everybody was smoking cigarettes, but I had a few people raising their eyebrows and giving me dirty looks for smoking a cigar. And I was like, hey, man, it's a smoking bar. If you don't like smoke, you shouldn't be here. So I agree with you on principle, but sometimes I kind of get my butt hurt about people wanting to tell me I can't smoke in a smoking facility. Oh, yeah. No, I uh, we we had that same issue. And this is kind of one of the uh, precedents of why I had that is um, we were smoking one day on our porch with, you know, a group of 10 guys and a girl came out and uh, she's, you know, a great friend of the fraternity and all. Um, But then. She just walked out, looked at us, and she goes, oh, that stuff smells. And then walked away. And we're like, you know, you didn't have to be rude about it. Yeah. You know hey, what I mean? So, it's not yeah. necessarily just for cigar smokers. So was she good looking? Uh, <laughs> on, on a good day. On, on a, a good, good day. day. <laughs> See, if she, if, she, if, she was, if she was smoking hot, they would have all put their <laughs> cigars, cigars out. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Some of them would have. Right. Go to... Thou shalt give others the option to cut and light their own cigar, but make sure you offer help if they need it. They will appreciate it. I think that's a great tip, uh, and I, I think a lot of shops 
need to uh, realize that because I've been to some shops before where I bought a cigar and before I could even get the money in my pocket, they had already cut it for me. And I was like, whoa, whoa, you don't, you don't, you don't know how I like my cigar cut. You know what I mean? Everybody has their own preference. Thou shalt not inhale. You know what? <laughs> we preach that all the time. We have a young man that hangs out with us. His name is Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'll look over, and he's exhaling this big puff of smoke. And I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing over there? And uh, yeah. we also have a really good friend who recently just quit smoking cigars. <laughs> and So he says. Well, no, he did. He did? Yeah. And uh, he, he, I think he's probably late 60s, early 70s. Really good guy. But he's inhaled his cigars all of his life, and now he's having some health issues. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, the uh, FDA has stated that if you don't inhale your cigars and you smoke one to two cigars a day, the chances of getting lung cancer compared to someone who doesn't smoke is nil. But if you're inhaling your cigars... I think I saw somewhere where one cigar Cigar. was equal to a pack Pack. of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, great advice there. Don't inhale. If you do inhale, stop inhaling. Yeah, my my dad, he he smokes, he's been smoking cigarettes uh, his entire life. And, you know, growing up, I was like, I'm never going to touch a cigarette in my life. Still haven't to this day. But cigars are a whole different story. And, you know, we still sit on our back porch or in our garage and we'll smoke together. I'll be smoking my cigars, and he'll be smoking a cigarette. And he goes, "Hey, you know, can I, can I get a puff?" And so I'll give it to him, and I was like, "Don't inhale, don't right, inhale. right, he's right." Been inhaling, <laughs> and first thing he does, <laughs> he inhales, and, and then he's like, "Oh, I don't know how you can do this." So let me ask you this: Have you ever accidentally inhaled a cigar? Oh yes, many times. Yeah, and especially that's, when that's, uh, that's not the fun. alcohol kicks in a little too much. Yeah, that's <laughs> not fun. Yeah. I've also done it where you puff from the wrong end and while it's lit, and that wasn't too good either. <laughs> yeah, well, you need to slow down on the <laughs> drinking, yeah. young man. <laughs> Leave that buffalo trace around. Right. <laughs> so, all right, number seven is do not clench one cigar between their teeth. Don't chew it or slobber on it. You are not a dog. And it's not your bone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I like that. Uh, I, I, will, I will tell you this, though. I do put the cigar between my teeth most of the time when I light it initially. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's more of a concept of, hey, you're doing a task, you know, set it down. Feel free to, you right, know, right. You know, if they're cutting someone else's cigar or lighting it for them, uh, you know, set it down or have someone else hold it for you. And, you know, the last thing, you know, this is a, a, a social event. Absolutely. And a lot of times I find myself, you know, a guy doesn't want a whole cigar himself, so he'll take a puff of mine. So I'll give it to him. I'll make sure that I don't, you know, there's no slobber on it. Right, and, right. You know, last thing you want to do is grab someone else's cigar and it's, you know, the cap is just ruined and yeah. soaked to the bone and yeah. it's just not sanitary. Swapping <laughs> slob. All right, let's get to number eight. Thou shalt be wary of smoking time when you go to the cigar shop. Yes. And so what he's saying is if the shop closes at 10, don't come in at 1030 and think you're going to smoke a cigar and put the people who work there in a position to where they're having to wait for you. They've been at work all day and they want to go home. You know what I mean? I mean, when I'm at work and I get off work, man, I'm done. I don't want to talk to anybody. And I work 24 seven at my other job five days a week. So Thursday at 1800, <laughs> Man, don't mess with me because I'm done. So if you're smoking a cigar in a shop, make sure you're conscious of the people who work there and be polite. Have respect. Yep. It's just like a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't show up a to restaurant, a restaurant. You're gonna be at least, kill. Yeah, you're going to be there for at least an hour. Don't show up 10 minutes before they close unless you're getting carry out. Yeah, and don't take a rotisserie chicken. In your purse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thou shalt not crush the cigar when it's finished. That's my pet peeve. Yeah, man. that's that's Brian's pet peeve. Uh, if you, like, stomp out your cigar, Brian's got his nose turned up. He's got his <laughs> arms crossed. He's looking mm-hmm. like he's about to, like, blow his, the top yeah. of his head off. So It's a piece of art, man. Treat it that way. Yeah, exactly. All right. So number 10, always have an extra cigar on hand when you're smoking case a brother of the leaf shows up and he's in a pinch and doesn't have one i love that man and i i I never really thought about it as being a rule but i mean just amongst cigar smokers i think that's kind of a common 
uh, etiquette that, you know, a brother doesn't have a cigar. We always offer him one. So I really like that. And what I want to yep. say mostly about your uh, Ten Commandments is I'm very impressed that you put this list together being at your age. You're a man of wisdom. So we appreciate that. And we appreciate you taking the time to make this up, brother. You know, I love cigars. I have a great passion for it. Um, you know, I'm in a relationship right now, uh, going on two years and, uh, you know, I, I've been smoking way before that. And I told her day one, Hey, just so you know, this, this is, this part of the package. <laughs> hey, you're and like, she has been, that's the deal she, breaker yeah, right there. Yeah. That's the deal <laughs> yeah, breaker. You know, if, yeah. If, it, if they say, you know, I'm not a fan of that. Sorry. Hit the door. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> She's been with me, you know, ever since. And Every so often, she'll smoke a nice little acid blondie. Nice. Um, you know, okay. nice, small, you know, it's petite, um, and it's got a little flavor, so it won't turn her away. Right. Well, that's good. But I caution you, don't let her start smoking cigars all the time. Then it gets into a position where you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, man. Well, hey, do you have any questions for us before we go? Not particularly. Uh, I know I've, you know, I've listened to a lot of your uh, episode so far and i don't know if your tastes have changed but you know what are your guys's you know top three favorite cigars Ooh, top three you know what i i'm gonna let bryant answer this i'm not gonna <laughs> answer because uh next month yeah, i'm yeah, gonna release my yeah. top 10 so if i name off my top three now that that'll kind of blow the wad on uh, the top <laughs> yeah, 10 but true. bryant he uh you know, I'll tell you this. Whenever I met Bryant, Bryant was like a three-cigar guy. He liked about three different cigars. He smoked the same ones every day. And now he's kind of like me. He's adventuring out all over the place. And as far as I go, I mean, I love Maduro's. I love Sumatra's. I love Corojo's. I even enjoy Connecticut. So, I mean, I'm all over the place, but I definitely have my favorites. But anyway, let's let Bryant tell us what his favorite three at this time is. <laughs> right at this time. This is going to be the Monte Cristo Espada Oscuro. Mm -hmm. Oscuro. Now, is that the uh, Placencia made? Yeah. See, I smoked that, and I was not a fan. That's you. I know, I know. I'm just I saying. A, I'm a Monte Cristo man. I know I you are. I started off with oh. Monte Cristos for this to be blended by Placencia and the taste, the uh, aroma, the uh, structure, number one on my list. Number two would be- Really? That's the number one? To me. You asked about my list. Now, I'm not going to go off on you and your way out boutiques, but number two, <laughs> Hiram and Solomon, the Master Mason. That is my go-to because- no matter, I've had, I can't count how many, each one has given me the same satisfaction each time. They're, the draw is perfect for me. The taste, it's a medium to bold, and each one has been exactly the same. I haven't been disappointed. So in. what you're saying is, unlike the Rolling Stones, you can get satisfaction. <sighs> right there. <and> there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you say your number three is? <laughs> I'm, see, when you get down to the third one, it's yeah. harder because there's so many choices. There's too many choices for me on that one. I kind of thought you would go with the steel horse. Man, that's going to be it, yeah. You're going to go yeah, with the, the okay, steel horse. The steel horse. Oh, I've, yeah. I, you know, I know what you like. Yeah, because I'm sitting there thinking about it. I was like, you know, it actually is a step above any other that I would uh, even think about. Gotcha. Those three, you know, especially with the Monte Cristo, I always have one of them with me when I go. Uh, the Master Mason. I, ha I may have one every once in a while, but that steel horse, it's my go-to, especially when I go to the leaf. It's something, if I smoke what I had in my, my traveling pack, first thing I'm going to go do is grab me a steel horse. Right. I, I see you smoking those all the yeah. time. That's why I figured that. Yeah. So uh, tell us your top three there, Jacob. Uh, so <laughs> mm. I kind of have a, you know, top three for, you know, several different categories. <laughs> categories. Uh, I've been keeping this dossier, like I said, for about four years, and I've smoked almost 400 different cigars nice. and yeah. so you know i have yeah. i have my unique cigars and then i have you know my all-time favorite and then i have you know my top three for a beginner you know that you know kind of gets their foot in the door kind of smoke sure um but you know those are typically more flavored for those folks um because you know first one you know you don't want it to be a super bitter one and then they get turned off because they don't like the bitterness of it um but then when they you know when they try an acid cigar they're going to be like wow i 
I hope other cigars are like this. And then, you know, they try a couple and they're like, okay, that wasn't like the acid, but I'm still going to try some more, see if I can find one that's kind of like that. Right, absolutely. So we'll I like see. to call those, you know, Drew Estate. Anything by Drew Estate is just, you know, that flavor that, you know, Sumatra wrappers and then, you know, specially flavored so that, you know, it's kind of like smoking a candy cigarette, you know, <laughs> right. you know those candy cigarettes from back in the day. Um, and, you know, for the females, you know, well, we always for say that when, whenever, in fact, I guess probably about eight or nine months ago, I was sitting in the shop and this uh, big Air Force guy come in, looked like he was about 6'4", probably weighed yeah. about 280, and he was just muscled up, and he was getting a blondie. And I was like, hey, man, is that for your wife? And he was like, no, that's for me. And I was like, you don't smoke men's cigars? And uh, yeah. anyway, he was like, well, I really just got into cigar smoking. And I was like, hey, man, you know what? There's nothing wrong with smoking one of those when you get started. But when you're ready to start mm -hmm. smoking manly cigars, you let me know, and I'll take you back to the humidor. And he was like, well, what do you got? Yeah. So we went back and picked him out a couple of cigars, yeah. and he started smoking those. Yeah. Well, there you go. See, getting that foot in the door, he's been smoking before, wants to try more, just doesn't know what he wants. Right, you, you know, and it's and as a new guy, it's hard to go in a humidor because you're very intimidated. There's so many cigars. I mean, if you don't, if you haven't, you know, made your way around the humidor smoking, then it's kind of hard to find a starting point. But once you find a starting mm -hmm. point, it's easy because you're like, I like that or I didn't like that. So whenever I go to my next cigar, I want to find something that's similar to that so I can kind of branch out what I like. And then, of course, you do yeah. have some of those guys that pick the same cigar, you know, from day one, from the rest of their life. You know, I like to talk about uh, Mr. Perini, who smoked the uh, Arturo Fuentes, and I don't think I've ever seen him smoke anything other than that. Me neither. He comes in there and buys a pack of them. Or no, a box. Yeah. Yeah, he so. He just walks out. Matter of fact, last time I saw him, yeah, he my, two my boxes. My first 10 cigars were uh, acid Cuban Cubas. You know, oh, wow. those were a great, you know, foot in the door for me, and then I was like, you know, there's probably more out there, so. Well, you know, the funny thing I is, I is I started smoking cigars and I never smoked an acid. And uh, I believe probably after I've been smoking cigars for about a year, maybe a year and a half, a friend of mine smoked acids and he was like, oh man, you got to try these. So I went and had a Cuba Cuba and I was like, that is the worst cigar <laughs> I have ever had. So, you know, once you get into the natural taste of tobacco, yeah. it's hard to go to an infused flavor cigar. So I yeah, think it's a yeah. great starting point for people, but if you bypass that when you start, you're probably not going to want to go that direction later on. Although I will say this, uh, are, have you ever smoked one of the Kentucky Fire Cured? I have not. Okay, so it basically smells like a campfire. And, it's, it, and the thing about it is, if I haven't had a cigar and I go smoke one of those, I'm probably not going to like it. I mean, it's not bad, but... If I've smoked about five cigars in a day and now I can't taste any cigars because my mouth just tastes like, a, you know, one cigar and I smoke a Kentucky Fire Cured, man, it's fabulous because it gives you this rich flavor. Even though you've smoked several cigars that day, you can still have a really good flavor from that cigar. And it's not infused. They actually fire cure a couple of the leaves that are in the cigar. The All the leaves are not fire cured, but the... Uh, a couple of them are. Anyway, it's a really unique uh, cigar, and I really do enjoy smoking the Flying Pig uh, of that cigar. I'll definitely have to look into that. Yeah, it's definitely um, something that's yeah. unique. I love trying unique cigars. Uh, last summer, um, I was actually in Texas. I actually interned for a company um, that was right in downtown Dallas. I was living you know, kind of by Irving, and there was a, a cigar shop called Elite Cigar Cafe. At, right there and i believe it's addison okay yeah um, i know where addison is i've never been to that shop but i've heard about it but it's i mean it's like a restaurant for one half and then the other half is like the cigar area they don't have any uh, lounge chairs in the cigar area but you can go right into the restaurant sit at the bar and you know light up right there and uh, i had a great time i smoked three cigars while i was there you know what i have to say about that welcome to texas buddy <laughs> 
So anyway, man, hey, we appreciate you taking the time out of your evening and joining us on the show. Uh, this actual episode is going to be out this coming Saturday. So we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we look forward to communicating with you further on. And if there's any way we can help you, uh, if you decide to do a blog or a podcast, I've done both of those. And so if you need any help from us, man, feel free to reach out anytime. We're happy to help you. We're always here for you, brother. Well, you know, I love to hear that. And, you know, more brothers, brothers from the Leaf, so... And I love hearing that and love being a part. And uh, if you guys have any uh, unique cigar help, let me know. I, I smoked a 20-inch uh, that was an 80-gauge cigar by La Aurora last summer. Wow. And it was a 10-hour smoke. 10-hour uh, smoke. Wow. Yeah. So I, I try and find as many unique cigars <laughs> like that as I can and, you know, smoke them. So if you guys ever find unique cigars that, you know, you, you have to double, you know, do a double take for it. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely keep me in the loop because i'm always right. looking for hey well i'll tell you what ones. have you tried any of the flying pigs actually yes okay um so, i was actually down in texas i forgot the shop though uh the agonorsa leaf which makes the lunatic cigars is coming out with their own version of like a flying pig it's a double perfecto and the size Ooh. ranges from four and a half by 60 to a five and a half by 80 so those wow. are coming out this week and uh anyway you'll definitely want to check that out uh i don't know if you've ever had the lunatic line of cigars but agonorsa leaf yep. makes a great product yeah the uh, jfr lunatic i actually spoke that uh this semester earlier this year um i believe it was a uh, eight inch by 80 yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah that, that's a little too big for me but anyway <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, you have a great night. We appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate the talk. Yes, sir, man. Have a good night, brother. It's great to see young guys getting into the cigar community uh, because I really want to see the cigar community grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we get a different perspective when you sit down with a young man and talk to him in the shop. Yeah, especially one like him that... Uh has kept a dossier for oh, four yeah, years. Four man. years. Every every stick he smoked, he has you know something to say about it, whether it's good or bad. And he goes back to that when he feels like, okay, what am I want to do today? Oh, I look in here, page five. <laughs> right, what I have on page five. That is that is persistence, man. That's yeah. great. At twenty three, too. Pretty impressive. Yeah. So I, you know what, I'm going to go out on a limb here, <laughs> and I'm going to guess that he's OCD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Uh, I guess uh, let's go ahead and get to the interview coming up with uh, Jason at Barrel Burners. Yes. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy that. Uh, he's a, he's just a really unique guy. He smokes a lot of cigars. He's all over the place like I am, and uh, he does a lot of videos on Instagram, and they also have a YouTube channel that you can check out. Anyway, we'll be right back after the break, and we'll be talking to Jason. Stick with us, guys. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, Cigar Talk. We have a special guest coming on with us. I've really been putting this together for quite some time, uh, but our schedules have just been all over the place. I know he's a super busy guy, but we finally got him nailed down, got him on the show today. We got Jason from the Barrel Burners uh, from Instagram. I'm sure he's all over the place on YouTube and Facebook as well. But anyway, we talk back and forth uh, pretty regular. We're just happy to have him on the show. How are you doing today, Jason? Good, Rob. Thanks for having me, brother. Honored to have you on the show. Man, you've been doing really good things. Uh, man, you've been around on Instagram and social media as far back as I can remember when I got started. So uh, how long have you guys actually uh, been an organization? Man, it's crazy. It's blown up. Believe it or not, even with the social media presence we have right now, we're not even a year old. Are you serious? Took, yeah, man. I took my first prospect in in September of last year. So it is, I never imagined it would blow up the way it has. Wow. So you're talking like eight, nine months in. Yeah. Yeah. We won't be a year till September. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. See, I was going to guess y'all been around for like three or four years. You would think, man, I, I get DMs from cigar companies and, and very humbling. They're, they're telling me they can't get on social media without seeing our patches everywhere. Dude, so, you can't go anywhere on social media without seeing y'all's logo. That That's what I'm saying. So we're very grateful the way it took off. It, I still can't believe it sometimes. How did you actually get started with Barrel Burners? I mean, was are, is, this, is this your baby? It, it's pretty much my baby. The way it started out, 
I, I'm from a gaming background. I was a gamer. I would stream on Twitch, and I was always used to having close-knit groups of guys that you had to talk to daily. You had to build friendships. You needed their help playing games. You needed help doing levels. So I, I was kind of striving for something like that in the cigar community. So what, what I did, how it really started, this started as a poker night once a month at my house. Oh, I no said, way. Yeah, I sent DMs just out of the blue. I sent one. I had my brother, my best friend and two other friends, and I sent DMs. I was like, hey, I want to start a once-a-month guys' night. Let's play poker and smoke some cigars. And I think I sent 10 invites out, and, and it ended up being six of us. And a few of them there had never had a cigar in their whole life to our first poker night. So wow. that that's how it started. We run a few of those, and I was like, man, we need to name the group. So we started throwing names out, doing all this, and we had – different people throwing logo ideas out and and, and it was going to be just our group of six and then i decided hey man I, I want it to be bigger than this i want to be this big social media i think i got the format i've seen enough clubs i i want to be completely different on how we bring people in what they got to do so i branched over what we created our discord server and everything and then all the other guys they kind of like that eh, this seems like it's just too much work. We just want to have fun. We like the small group of six. We don't want to commit to this and one day get where we, it's just too much work and we're not having fun. So right. about a week after I did that and converted it over to go to the uh, social media side, I wanted to, everybody kind of backed away. I mean, two of them were kind of social media savvy and, and they're still around and posting, but it, it, at that moment it kind of, it's segregated and it become what it's blown up to now. And, and the core group of the six, which I call the charter members that everybody's kind of drifted away and doing their own thing. Families happen. One guy got married. Uh, another guy had a baby. So it, we all kind of the core group drifted away and nobody partaked in this other side that I created. So oh, okay. social media side has always been, what I come up with, like I said, it, it started with our poker night. I mean, that's history. Those six guys will always be a part of what kind of spearheaded this. And, and, and that's, I mean, that's what it turned into. And now you see, see what it is. And yeah, it's crazy, man. Cause I see your coin or your patches yeah. everywhere. Well, the, with our members, and I think what sets us apart, I mean, there are a lot of clubs out there and I don't knock any of them ever club is good for a certain type of member. There's some members that they, they're okay saying, hey, I'm with a club, I have a patch, I'm part of this club. But where we're at, I mean, we are, you have to be active from day one to earn our patch. I mean, it's a minimum three-week wait, but you have to talk so much in our chat, you got to use our hashtag. And what we find that once those guys have finally earned their patch, they don't go nowhere. They're still super active. Yeah, they're part of the community. Yeah, they at that point, they've done made friendships and family, and these guys are rolling conversations daily. They wake up, and they're telling us hi in chats before they're probably telling some of their family members at home hi. I mean, it's... Wow. And, and that's what I want to develop. I, I mean, like I said, I'm not knocking any other methods, but for me, I don't care if I ever have thousands of members. If I can keep a couple hundred core, super active members like we have now, I mean, it looks like we have thousands out there. We have so much social media presence. Oh, I mean, man. You know? I, I mean, by looking at the social media presence, I would think that you guys already have tens of thousands. And, and that's what I'm saying. When you get a core group that are super active and, and they love the method and they love how they have to be active to get anything. And now, granted, we get guys that come in there, say they can meet the requirements, and two days later they leave chat on their own. They're like, yeah, this is too much work. And, and that's okay. I'm not knocking it. I mean, right. I have a format. I'm not budging on it. It's working. Big companies are noticing the way we do things. I'm constantly getting DMs and getting praises from people I never thought would reach out and tell me they like what we're doing. So we're definitely doing something right. Are we for everybody? Definitely we're not for everybody. But the ones that fit in and love what we're doing, they're a perfect fit for us. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, and the thing about it is, I mean, you you have a format and you have a desired type community that you're looking for. So, right. I mean, yeah, it's not for everyone, but I mean, also, you know, it's, it's basically kind of like just like a cigar. One cigar is not for everyone. You know what I mean? It, it's, exactly. And I come from, I've been, I've been in a motorcycle club 15, 20 years. I grew up around them. So when I think of the word club, I always associate club with, 
active members that hang out see each other constantly and they know everybody in their club yeah yeah that was that's my vision for a club is it right is it wrong i mean i don't know but it, it's what i wanted and yeah it, i never believed it would take off the way it did and people actually love my format but i mean I'm, I'm happy you know what i love about your organization is everyone that i see posting on a regular basis and you know uh me and you see each other cross paths on social media pretty regular and uh so i know a lot of your members by name and by faces and what i love about it it's such a positive group right well what i tell people we're, we're a no drama group i mean even even the earning our membership doesn't guarantee you're going to be a member. I mean, we've had to let people go. I mean, we put up with no drama. I mean, there's no kind of drama. We just, we're not going to put it, put up with it. I mean, we've had people pop in and call stuff and I mean, they're gone. I mean, it's even once you earn your membership, there's still requirements to still be in our chats. I mean, if you can't hold the chat end of it, we take you out of chats. I mean, I know it may sound bad, but that's, no, that's I, just what I, we're looking. That's just what we're looking for. Remember, I mean, we call them patch hunters. I get email daily. Can I just buy your patch? No. I mean, if you would, the patch to me doesn't mean nothing if you don't have the family surrounded. Right, right. Well, I, I love what you guys are doing. So tell us about like what kind of events and what kind of stuff you guys do as a group. Well, being as new as we are, we just recently did a huge uh, Cigars for Warriors event with uh, La Aurora Cigars in Embargo in Arizona. Uh, that event raised 1,626 cigars. That was a new record for the state of Arizona with Cigars for Warriors. So, oh, man, that's great. That was, yeah, that was our first big event. We have done about a month before that. I put on an event just internal through our club, had everybody mail me cigars. That event, we raised 500 cigars for the first time even trying it. Wow. And I sent them all to Cigars for Warriors. So. Man, that is fantastic. So, I mean, you said how many on the other one was 1,400? 1,626. I'll never forget that number. Yeah, you've raised <laughs> over 2,000 cigars for Cigar for Warriors in your first, well, you haven't even been a whole year yet. Yeah, and I, I'm all for the soldiers. So every event, every meetup we do, we are involved in Cigars for Warriors. We have a huge uh, event coming up uh, June 22nd, I think it is. This month we're doing at Tampa, Florida at uh, Cigar Castle. So that's a big one. And then we have the huge one, which I'll be attending myself uh, in August, is going to be in New Jersey. And uh, Viva La Vida Cigars is putting on an event with us in oh, Jersey. Oh, man, got to love Viva La Vida Cigars. Man, I tell you, it's my go-to. I'm in love with that cigar. I have to smoke one or two a week in the rotation with everything else I'm smoking. It's it's definitely my go-to right now. And I'll tell you, if you guys uh, aren't following Barrel Burners uh, and checking out what he's smoking, he smokes a lot of different cigars. I smoke a lot of different cigars, too. But I, I love a brother that is adventurous like I am because, I mean, I'll <laughs> smoke anything once. Although I've never smoked a Trader Jack, I'll never smoke a Trader Jack. But other than that, I'll smoke anything once. Well, and believe it or not, I tell people all the time, I've been smoking cigars about six years but <clears throat> this last six months to a year my whole outlook on cigars have changed i've kind of branched off of the bigger name companies and i went more to the boutique cigars i'm in the same boat and i swear those smaller companies are putting out the best cigars on the market right now by far if you haven't tried any of the smaller companies you have to branch out. When I did that, I found a whole new love for cigars. Again. Well, dude, I'm completely with you because when you go to the boutique cigars, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I think the level of quality control is off the chart. I, I think so, too. I don't know if it's because they're not putting out near the cigars and they can keep a closer look on it, but, I mean, the smaller companies are absolutely killing it right now, and that's kind of what I've gauged my attention towards. Absolutely. Like, I did an interview a couple of weeks ago with Mike Rosales from uh, Roma Craft mm -hmm. and man their quality control I mean you've smoked Roma Craft before you know every time you buy one it's going to be a top of the line stick yep yep yeah those, those guys I mean you got protocol absolutely killing it right now with their products oh man I just smoked my first protocol last week it blew me out of the water man it which was, one did you have it was the uh, blue label the blue label is the, my absolute favorite of their line. Oh, amazing cigar. Actually, one of the listeners to the show sent me a couple of those. And I'm telling you, I was like, holy cow, where has this been? So yep. how long have they been around? Do you know? 
man, I just seen them pop up over the last year. They were everywhere. And I said, you know what? I got to try this. I ordered me a sampler and then I ended up ordering a box after I tried the sampler. Yeah, man. They were really good. Yeah. Those guys, Black Label, I love. Uh, I mean, it's just so many small companies out there just absolutely killing it. Yeah. In fact, I've got a guy coming by Abilene to do to be on the show. He's a rep. Uh, I believe his name's Ben from Black Label, and I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of Black Label right now. Yes. Black Label, amazing. Hiram and Solomon, I love. I, I just I love a good strong cigar. I mean, I, they're they're all killing it. I can't praise them enough. They're all doing something right. Hey, now have you uh, tried the Blanco line? I have not tried the Blanco line. Uh, I don't know if you know David Blanco, but he's the blender and owner of Blanco Cigars. But he does the blending for Hiram and Solomon and oh, uh, nice. uh, Warfighters. And okay. uh, man, if you like a good stout cigar you got to check out the Blanco line. Definitely. will put that on my to-do list. Yeah. There also is uh, something else brewing. I know a lot of guys may have seen it on Instagram and I do want to praise that too. We have uh, kind of joined forces with Pravada Cigar Club. And uh, I don't know if any guys are familiar with Brian and what he does, but he uh, worked with us and he did a Barrel Burners exclusive quarterly box for us. It's only for our members. And it's going to be three cigars in it every quarter. And these are going to be even more rare than what he puts in his normal box because these are lower quantities that he could get his hands on. Oh, nice, man. Very nice. Yeah, so so been working with him. Great guy. Absolutely love his products, too. I love what he's doing with the old, the aged and rare cigars in his boxes. So, yeah, I mean, I'm truly blessed, man. Stuff like that just keeps falling in our lap, and and that just reminds me we're doing something right. Yeah, and isn't it crazy? I mean, when you're doing the right thing for the right reason, how things just keep coming to you. And, I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat with you because, you know, I just kind of – well, I don't know if you know how I got started doing this. Uh, I actually started doing a blog – uh, last summer and I was doing cigar shop reviews. I was going to shops and I'd give them a rating, you know, how was their humidor? Uh, how was their lounge? How was the selection in the humidor? How friendly was the staff? And, uh, anyway, after going to just three shops, I was like, man, I'm meeting some awesome people instead of writing about, how good the shops are, I want to start doing a show and interviewing the people at the shops because I wanted people to have that same experience I was having. You know what I mean? Right. And so ever since then, man, I started doing the show. And I mean, you know, like I think our first episode had like 57 people listen to it. And I was like, well, hopefully it'll get a little bit better. (laughs) So six months later, man, it's like overwhelmingly honor. I feel honored that people want to take time to listen to the show. So, and I know how busy I am outside of my regular job how busy you are because you're doing mm-hmm. social media like i do but you're also doing a youtube channel you do live video streams all the time uh you're always talking about cigars you're smoking so i know that you're one busy man yeah that was one thing i set out to do when i started a club I, I always wanted to be easily accessible to all my members i try to do at least one instagram live a week sometimes i can hit two maybe three but I'm in chat with those guys daily. I mean, there's not a day go by that I don't talk to everybody in chat. So I'm in there with them, grinding it as well. So I'm always accessible. Those guys DM me 24-7 when they need something or have a problem. So I'm always around. I'm not in the shadows watching. Absolutely. And, well, I was going to ask you right quick. Uh, are you guys members, like, in the United States? Are you all, like, in different countries? Are you worldwide? How's your member base? I pretty much take them worldwide. I just actually, I mean, I know Hawaii, it's United States, but I just got my first member of Hawaii. We got pretty good presence in Canada already. I got several UK members. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're spreading out now. That's awesome, man. Uh, I'm, I'm just amazed, uh, when I look at where the risk, the people who register for our website are at, and I mean, it's anywhere from the United States to Europe, to Australia, to Brazil. And I'm just like, wow. I mean, the internet's so cool that you can interact with people and they're, and they're all brothers of the leaf or sisters of the leaf. And I truly believe the cigar community is the best community out there. Like I said, I've been in a gaming community. I mean, but the cigar community is just, it's in a world of its own. You never meet a stranger. There's always a mutual respect. It just, I love it. I mean, there's there's nothing better. So, no, any member that wants to join us can. Of course, they need to. Our chats are English. So, I mean, as long as you can get in there and chat and we understand you, we don't stop you. you if you earn it, it's yours. That's awesome, man. 
So I want to go back a little bit on your history. You said you were a gamer before. So what what games were you playing back in the day? Oh, back in the day, uh, I mean, I was a big Destiny player when it was at its best. So you you basically had to have five or six friends constantly to do the missions, do the raids with. But I've played everything. I mean, I've had every system since I was a kid on up. So I got you. Well, hey, how how old are you? I am 38. 38. Okay, so you're no spring chicken. No, nope. I'm getting up there. Especially in the video game <laughs> genre. Oh, yeah, I've seen it go from worse to where we're at now where it looks like you're playing a movie. So I, I've been through the whole thing, starting with Atari on up. So I, I've seen the element evolution of video games for sure well that's cool that you've seen the video game community you said earlier uh the motorcycle community and now you're in the cigar community and i'm with you man i i've been in different groups throughout my life and i'm 50 so i'm really old uh but the cigar community is by far bar none the best community i've ever been a part of yeah i i agree i, I compare it a lot to the motorcycle community it's it's so much mutual respect. I mean, if you pull up on a motorcycle, everybody's asking you about it, talking about your bike, telling you about theirs. It's the same thing with cigars. You walk into a building and somebody's smoking a cigar, you find yourself walking over to them, seeing what they're smoking, and then you're talking about cigars for the next hour. Oh, absolutely, man. So what do you guys have coming up? I mean, you're coming up on your year anniversary. I, I'm going to guess that you have something planned for your year anniversary. Well, well, like I said, uh, this month we got the big Florida event, but August – is going to be a big big event so that may almost the way we're going to party at that one it may be pretty much the big uh anniversary throwdown because it, it's going to be a big event we have a, we have bands it's going to be at the grand saloon in new jersey we have uh catered food we have live band open bar man it's, it's going to be awesome wow man that sounds great now have you been up to new jersey before I have not. One of my uh, one of my members, Nick, he's uh, helps me run the club. He actually owns the bar and saloon we're going to be at. And, oh, great. Uh, Billy from Billy from Viva La Vida has actually stopped at the spot and ate and hung out with Nick, and he he suggested we have it there. So I was like, well, if you think that highly of that place, then we're going to do it. That's where we're going to throw down, and it helps a fellow member out too. So. Yeah, and I tell you what, man, Billy. I mean, you got to have so much respect for that guy, for his history and what he's done. Oh, man. One of the greatest guys I've ever talked to. The first time he called me, I felt I'd known him my whole life. Oh, I know, man. He is, he's fantastic. And, and everyone that I've ever talked to that's talked to Billy, it just has that same respect. I mean, you, you feel like you're talking to somebody who's been around for eons. And, I mean, he has. He's been in the business for 27 years, but he's just so humble about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's very humble and very appreciative for everything you do for for him and I, I can't wait to finally sit down and have a cigar with him yeah i'm in the same way man so my question is when are you going to come out to texas texas man you're my neighbor i, I know man drive through there it's not that far <laughs> uh I, I don't know how far alexandria how far is alexandria from uh dallas fort worth uh, I think I'm about five hours from Dallas. Well, that's not bad, man. I'm about three hours from uh, DFW area. We'll have to get together in the DFW area. There's several cigar lounges there. We should meet up and just have a couple of cigars and a couple of beverages, man. Yeah, I'm about ready to take a road trip and see everybody for sure. It's a busy year for us, too. I mean, we're we're big football fan family, so we got football games coming up. And, and you're a big Dallas Cowboy fan, right? Oh, is that a team? <laughs> oh, wow. Man, I'm diehard, proud Saints fan, season ticket holder. I am all for that black and gold. Hey, I, I know that. We've had discussions before on Instagram. I, I'm well aware that you go for the black and gold. <laughs> Anyway, man, so is there anything else you want to tell us before we wrap it up? I just wanted to reach out to you because I love what you guys do, and I just see you everywhere, and I mean every day. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I mean, there's, we basically covered everything. I kind of wanted to go over the history. I want to go over the events we do. I mean, if anybody's interested, they can they can DM me on Instagram. They can uh, email me at barrelburners at yahoo.com. They can check out our website that's constantly updated. I mean, I'm quick getting to the messages. I'll send them requirements. If they think we, they can do it, we'll, we'll give them a shot. And, awesome, and also, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in history. And even though my charter members ain't around, I'd like to give a shout out to them just in case they're listening. The, the charter members, of course, it was me, 
Jerry, it was Sean, it was Michael, it was Brody, and it was Adam. And uh, you can still see Adam around. He's pretty big in the cigar community still. He is uh, the bearded nerdist on Instagram now. He's still taking cigar pictures when he can. And nice. he's still out there plugging along. But, yeah, you never forget where you come from. It's just, absolutely. Like said, my, my vision was a little more than what they wanted to take on. And that's okay. We're still all friends, and I wish everybody the best. Well, that's awesome, man. So, hey, so tell everybody where they can find you. I know on Instagram, you're Barrel Burners. I am Barrel Burners on everything. We're BarrelBurners.com. We're YouTube slash Barrel Burners. Uh, Twitter, we're Barrel Burners. So, I mean, we're easy to find. Okay, awesome. And uh, I tell you what, for the episode that you're on, I'm going to place a link to your website so they when they go and look at the episode they'll have a picture of your logo and i'll have a link that goes to you as well so anybody listening can find you as easy as what i know how yes. to find you yes sir and anybody in the new jersey area we have opened this meetup to anybody so anybody can come have a cigar and party with us at our new jersey event Oh man! So just cool. hit us up for details. Yeah, it's open for everybody. So, it's oh man, be a big I'll tell you now. what, that whole community up there in New Jersey, as far as cigars goes, they're just awesome people up there. I've met so many people from the New York and New Jersey Queens area, and man, they are just a good bunch of people up there. Yeah, I was surprised to see how big it is because for a while Texas and Florida had our biggest base of membership, but all of a sudden the New York and New Jersey area has kind of took over, and I think. That's our states with the biggest member pool right now. Yeah, when I look at my Instagram following, uh, New York is actually number one. And I'm like, holy cow, I didn't oh, wow. have any idea that was the case. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It'll surprise you. But, I mean, I didn't realize cigars were as big as it was so it's a great community and it's a it's a big community so well hey brother man i appreciate you coming and being on the show and telling everybody about barrel burners if you guys want to take a look and see what they're doing they're all over the place i follow them mainly on instagram just because i'm on instagram the most but go by and check them out see what they're doing they're a great community and if you want to join dm them hit them up and he'll give you the whole rundown of what you need to do to get started so that you can become a member of barrel burners Yes, sir. And Instagram is our pretty much our priority and our main thing. Everything else is kind of a flow over. And when I post Instagram, it goes everywhere else. But the uh, the uh, website is constantly updated. We are doing a new thing. I'm doing once or twice a month where I do a featured barrel burner YouTube video. I have members take us on a tour of their man cave, their cigar collection, their whiskey collections. Oh, nice. Here whatever they got and they send it to me and I edit it and do an intro and we already have three of those up live. So make sure to check those out, especially if you're a collector, it's pretty cool getting to see what other people have in their house. Yeah. I'm going to have to go check that out because I love checking out other people's man caves. Yeah, I do too. And like I said, I started that about a month ago and it's been pretty overwhelming. Everybody's liking it. And we're getting good feedback. So I'm going to continue to do it as long as members will send me a video. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you hanging out with us and being on the show. And I know that me and you will be in contact again soon, as always. And if you need anything from me, brother, don't hesitate. Yes, sir. Same here. All right, man. Take care and have a good night. All right. Thank you, buddy. See you, bud. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the interview with Jason from Barrel Burners. Uh, if you'd like to know more, I'll have a uh, link on the website. Go by, check them out. It's a great community. I love the reach out that they're doing for the Cigars for Warriors. So definitely go by there, check them out. If you want to join, shoot them a message. They'll let you know what you got to do. And they have patches, they have coins, uh, and they're just a great community. So definitely go check them out. And uh, then let's talk about our sponsors before we go. And uh, we got a new sponsor last week. We hopefully have them around for a long time. We've got McAuliffe Cigars. And you guys know I'm a huge fan. I'm actually smoking the Medallia right now. Uh, it's one of my favorite smokes. Actually, their whole line, and you know, I, I've told you guys before, I'm not a real big Connecticut guy, but their Connecticut is by far the best Connecticut I've had. It's a thick, oily wrapper, uh, just a beautiful smoke. So I'm a big fan of the whole line that they do. And uh, anyway, go by, check them out. Uh, we also have the link on our webpage for the Ambassador Program. If you haven't gone to the website and filled out the registration for the Ambassador Program, it's super easy. Go by my website and click on the episode 
And then uh, down at the bottom, you'll see the uh, McAuliffe logo on next to it. Click on the link, go to their website. It's easy. Just fill it out and they will send you a handwritten certificate and your challenge coin with your own personal number. Join the community. You go to Facebook, you go to Instagram, you see them everywhere. And I got to say, these guys are really blowing it up and they're just creating a really good community. Uh, hats off all the way up to the top, all the way down to the bottom. They have a great team. And then, of course, we do have Hiram Solomon, and you guys know I'm a big fan of the Traveling Man. They have Actually, the whole line is good. That's just my favorite. And uh, hats off to uh, David Blanco for blending those guys' great cigars. So go by and check those out. And now it's time that we do the uh, Luxury Cigar Club giveaway. Uh, you guys that listen all the time know how it works. You go by the website click on the registration link and once you're registered you're entered in the drawing every week so it's not just for the one week that you go and register it's actually every week and uh, you go by if, if you're the winner we'll send you a code and you go by sign up for the platinum uh, program and they will uh, send you a free box that's simple so uh, let's get to who the lucky winner is this week it is david group and he is from oil city pennsylvania so congratulations to david uh, we appreciate your support we appreciate you registering and uh man if there's anything we can do for you guys send us a message uh there's a certain topic you want us to talk about uh are there any issues that you want to discuss uh shoot us a message we'll be happy to talk about them and uh, so anyway that about wraps it up for this week and uh, next week we've got oasis a cigar reviewer who's going to be on the show uh, he does great reviews he breaks cigars down like cold draw first third second third 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 gives you his overall written uh, opinion and uh, dude knows a lot about cigars so hats off to that dude we're so happy to have him coming to be on the show so anyway guys i uh, hope you have a great week until next time stay smoking my friends. 